rather than bringing it here and here is probably your best bet. There we go. It's good enough. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Gibson Garage Speed Shop. Thank you for tuning in for the second part of the transmission job. The first part was just tearing it out of that Dakota over there. The second part is today we're going to be disassembling the whole thing, getting all the clutch packs laid out, and showing you my technique for it. Uh, laying everything out in the order it came out, clutch packs and all, so we know and then we'll just swap out old packs for new packs and then everything goes back in opposite of the way it came out. And I gotta ask you please, in the beginning of the video, hit that super thanks button down below and help the channel out here. Doing this on the ground is a pain in the butt. Man, I really wanna get this lift up, pour some concrete. It's gonna cost about $1,000 or $1,500 or so to try and do it all myself. It's like four or five grand to get someone else to do it and you know for me to just sit here and wash with soda but i'm not trying to spend that much or take all of your guys's money for all of that anyways just just as cheapest amount of possible get it done so this is your 48 re four-wheel drive set up here in the back i've already took the transfer case off there before i pulled it out from underneath the car and i've already disassembled the uh, stuff here on the shifter and the neutral safety switch that's a t20 by the way if you don't know what that is it's one of these guys, Torx. I've also already moved the uh, speed sensor here. And you're also gonna need, for the rest of the job, as far as I know, a 7 16 a half inch, a T25 for this guy, and a hammer, just so you don't need a whole bunch of leverage or you know, you're not rolling this thing off the table trying to break these bolts loose. And just tap the wrench with a hammer. And I want to give a quick shout out to Logan Bilt, who really showed me how to tear this thing apart really fast. So that was really cool. But uh, I think I'm going to go through it a little bit faster without as much talking. So just sit back and enjoy, guys. Hey, good one. We're going to set all our hardware over here in this tray, this magnetic tray. We're going to keep all the hardware together in one spot. Now I can't be entirely certain, but I swear it looks like these pan bolts are in the way of this coming out. So we'll just remove these two or three. Just so we're sure. Set that aside for now. Now we'll come over here to the front pump and remove these six half inch bolts. In the tray. Now the reason we took off the back section, section first, because just like Logan said, you can use two of those bolts, thread them in like that, and then we'll grab a, either a slide hammer with a hook like this or the pliers.
so you want to be careful this pin actually sat inside of here I was wondering what the heck but that's what located these two items right here onto that was that pin that fell out Now here's this plate, it sits on like a uh, parking paw, which we'll sh be able to see better when we flip it over and get the valve body out. Now we can reach in and grab this snap ring from the bottom. This only spins clockwise because of the sprag gear in there. So you know that's how it's got to work when it goes back together. And that's the sprag gear. Kind of has this chainsaw tooth kind of look to it. There's a high side on the right and a low side on the left, so we'll keep that in mind. That's a thick, heavy duty band. Now we're gonna pop this out the back, but what uh, I wanna do first is remove this. There's a bearing on here. Just make sure you don't lose it. I'm gonna set that right there like that. Now we'll undo these bolts. These are 3 8 Oh. Set all those in the tray. Now back to the inside. Now we're gonna pop this guy out like this, I believe. We'll set that on top of that piston that was sitting inside of it. And we'll pull this out now before we forget. Set that in the tray with the bolts. Now there are five more 3 8 bolts here that hold in that outer shell that the Sprag gear sat in. But I don't think we need to remove that. So we'll just leave it there for now. We're going to let that drain for a little bit. Now we're ready to take this pan the rest of the way off. More half inch drive, or I mean half inch hex. Hey, hey. Reusable gasket number and oil pan number. Look at that. Oh, man. It looks like a sea urchin. Oh my god, it really does. Now grab your T25 and let's get this filter out of the way. Take those out, put them in the tray. So we got a new filter, of course. All right, there's four bolts here, all 7 16 heads. Three here and three up top. Total of 10, right? Is that right? I don't know. What I don't know if any of these are different sizes. Okay, these four are the same. Uh huh. These three too long and one short, which you can kind of tell by the taller areas. And then these three. The long one over here, two short ones over here. 
uh, we will put those all in the tray. Uh, let's see if we can wiggle this guy out of place now. Press on this 8 pin. Boom. Now it should just come right out. Slide that out. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to take this out. And that out. And this spring. That looks like everything. I spun the case around here so you can see inside the bell housing there's this pipe plug. And I put a 3 8 to quarter inch adapter on the end of my thing. Actually, I also have a quarter inch one of these I could have just put in here. So maybe I'm not as clever as I thought I am, but. There's that. Now we can slide this bar out, just kind of with our fingers here. And far enough until you can grab it from this side. We'll throw all this in the tray. Now you can't have too big of a table to work on here. I am slowly or well, quickly running out of room. Now that flathead finally comes into play here. We're gonna try and get this out. Push that in. There we go. Oh, you little turkey. There you go, come on out of there. There we go. Now this piston doesn't wanna come out. But, oh, see, there's the, actually, I might be able to do that from the side. There should be a hole somewhere that lets this thing pop out. Put some air in it. I'm not sure where that hole is. So if I had to take a guess, I'd say if I undid this, put some air in there, it'd shoot that piston out. This one, I can see the hole that would shoot this middle one out. And then there's one over here on the side that would probably shoot this piston out. Okay, wish me luck. Oh, I was wrong. Man, that does not want to come out of there. And that's how you do it. Just hit me right in the wrist, but we're good. Dang. I just spun it around a bunch and then, uh, yeah, then it finally gave up. That's starting to hurt my wrist now, like the pain is kicking in now. Oh. <laughs> that's bone pain. Yeah, that's one of them pains to take a second. Alright, so to get this last servo out, on some models you can get to this pin that runs to this apply lever from this side and you can hammer it out, but there is no such thing on this one. But what I can do is remove this with those seven, with those uh, small 3 8 bolts in the back and that will let this apply lever to swing all the way open and it can just stay there. nice and straight it goes in about three sixteenths of an inch and that's out well that's a heavy chunk of iron right there heavy and we'll just set that right there now that apply lever is no longer an issue i can swing it out of the way and then we'll get in here with the screwdriver okay yeah there's not a lot of force on that at all Ooh. There we go. Boom. Purple spring. Piston. It's got some 
numbers on it. Ew, that's like a big blob of goo. And we'll set that aside right here next to these other ones. And that is the case completely disassembled aside from this apply arm that doesn't want to come out. I'm going to set this case aside on some cardboard down here. And we'll bring up this guy. Holy cow! This thing is heavy. Goodness. Pull out this wire retainer ring and then some clutch packs should start falling out. Oh my god, there's a broken clip. I found a broken clip in the source, most likely, of all the metal that was around that magnet. The clip is broke in a couple spots. Like, wow. I'm afraid to stick my head down there, I just realized. <laughs> First we gotta get this big ring out, but this, both of these ends aren't even sitting uh, underneath a the land. There's one end there and one end here. My own hands in the way. Hey, okay. they're just, they should be, you know, inside of here. And I'm not sure they're supposed to be that far apart, but we might need a couple rings. We have to get this one out. And you can see the witness marks where this ring has rotated at some point. Set that, oh, pick it up this direction on top of that. What are there two rings sitting in the same spot? And we'll set that in the tray. Now there's two giant clips here. Or it's one clip with two giant ends. And this is where Logan built had a great idea. Oh, boom, I didn't even need to use the extra quarter inch drives. Here's a better shot of the broken stuff, the broken clips. You see a big gap here. Right there's a big gap. Right there's a gap. There's a gap. And right here is where they're supposed to be, I think, is that angle. That's my guess. That's where they're supposed to be split. The only one spot. But that's just sitting there, so let's pull that out of the way. We'll set it right there. All right, let's set this case aside, but it is handy actually to set this stuff on it if you don't have a pan with a big hole in it like that. So this might come up and down a few times, but for now, let's just get it out of the way. I'm gonna remove this bearing from the back side real quick before taking it over to the press. Chimney.
And so I modified some ball joint press pieces, create a little window, and just using my hand, I'm able to push this down and we can get access to both this snap wire ring in the middle and push that plate down and we'll get access to the wavy snap ring on the outside. There we go. Now we can get all these pieces of broken ring out of here. Is that all of them? I think that's all of them. And there it is. It's actually quite a lot of spring. Here you can see that's how much spring was on there, enough to lift the whole clutch pack from out from under here to way above it. So we'll take that off. Holy spring, that's a big one. These will only go off one way. It has like a lip down here. So we'll flip those upside down just like that. On top of the bearing that was on top of it. We'll put the spring inside of it. We'll put that there bearing on top of that looks like there's another like wire style ring in there That planetary set fell out. Now we'll flip it over. Take out this snap ring. Flip that that way. There we go. And that can go there. We'll set it this way. And there is another wire snap ring in here, which is probably pretty easy to remove. Just lift this up about halfway and then dig it out with a pick, but we're not gonna worry about it because there's no clutch packs in there. There's nothing for me to replace in there. Boom. That's the overdrive section disassembled. Well, I have changed my mind. I think I am going to take apart every last little bit, if nothing else, but for the sake of cleaning. I was checking out this planetary gear set, and this chunk of metal came falling out. So, and then I noticed all of these teeth are worn. And that's probably where a lot of the metal came from. This is probably original, 20... One years old, 21 year old fluid, 21 year old everything. So I think every little bit should come out. I'm going to remove this snap ring that's left in there. Like I said, just to clean out, make sure there's no metal chunks floating around. This is just a planetary gear set. I didn't, I wasn't going to tear it apart uh, until the chunk of metal came out, but now I'm going to take it apart too. So, like I said, it should be easy to pull out. We're just going to lift up enough to get room in there find where the end of it is oh look at that right where i needed it 
That ring's coming out. That ring's coming out. Ow. Okay. So I'm doing some inspecting here to see if we need any more parts. And it looks like all these bushings are kind of borderline. Like that's not terrible, but it's borderline. And this one in here, it's not terrible, but it's borderline, both of those inside there, which the larger one rides on that sprag and the smaller one rides on this little nipple there. So there's no real scarring on those, but this one is in really bad shape. It's lost all of its coating and it looks like it might even be chipping there. So while the kit did come with like two i think this one's for the other side of the pump the input side of the pump and i don't know where this one goes yet but uh, we're gonna call the video here because of that and we gotta wait on parts that other wavy ring so we're gonna call it and call this the end of the video for disassembly and in the next video we're gonna finish up assembling the overdrive setup, the direct drive clutches and the just overdrive and then there's direct overdrive, two clutch packs in the whole rear overdrive section. We'll finish that up and put that back together first in the next video just so I don't confuse myself and get too much disassembled here all at once and uh, and then yeah we'll move on. So please like, please subscribe, hit the notification bell and uh, until next time, peace.